Okay, so let's look at your inflammation and immunology of this client. Perfect. So inflammation and immunology, there's three different markers as you see here. They're listed in descending order of most severe down to least severe, most specific down to least specific. So calprotectin, calprotectin is a very reliable marker for indicating the potential for irritable bowel disease. Irritable bowel disease is different from irritable bowel syndrome. IBD refers to specifically either Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, an autoimmune condition occurring in the intestines. In this case, um, calprotectin is normal, so it's indicating this person most likely does not have those conditions. If I see calprotectin in the yellow or in the red, and this person's not coming in with a pre-existing diagnosis, I usually refer to a gastroenterologist just to have it ruled in or ruled out. Okay. Second marker is eosinophil protein X. Eosinophil protein X represents um, the eosinophilic activity in the gut. So eosinophils are a specific type of immune cell. If we see this marker elevated, first couple things that come to mind are histamine issues. So allergies could be food allergy, could be an aller allergic response to a gut microbe, like a parasite, for example, um, which is the second category or second thought that comes to my mind too is, are we dealing with a parasite? Eosinophils, even globally speaking, even looking at the rest of the body, we can run eosinophils in blood. And when they come back elevated, those are two first things that come to mind. If we rule those out, then we can look at other factors, but first looking looking there, especially since we're looking at a stool test. That looks great. Yeah, EPX looks great here. Yeah. Same with um, your uh, IgAs. So yeah. talk about that. Because we yeah. hear a lot about IgAs, IgGs, IgE, it gets a little confusing. Mm -hmm. It does. So fecal secretory IgA, I mentioned descending order down to the least specific. So fecal secretory IgA, IgA is an antibody, immunoglobulin A. We have four different antibodies, IgA, IgG, IgE, IgM, I apologize, five, and IgD. IgA lined our mucosal, um, mucosal linings. So we have the gut, we have the lungs, in women we have the vaginal canal. We largely find a high population of IgA. These guys, you can think of them as the first line of defense. So if we eat a food we're sensitive to, if we're experiencing a lot of psychological or emotional stress, if we're eating a poor diet, if we have imbalances in the gut microbiome, this guy is gonna be the, one of the first to respond. So that's why I say it's nonspecific because if it's elevated, we just see, okay, something's going on in the gut, something's triggering an immune response. Let's dig deeper to figure out what that, that is. Right. And oftentimes it's many different things, right? The person's experiencing a lot of emotional stress. Mm -hmm. um, they're eating a poor diet because of that. Um, they have imbalances in the gut microbiome. And so it's a lot of things that we'll work on. Um, but I do want to say one thing I want to point out with secretary IgA is low isn't necessarily always better. Great point. Yeah. <laughs> Explain why. Yeah. Right? You, you want to have that perfect balance perfect right in the balance. middle of this one. Mm -hmm. Too high tells us, it does say that your immune system is working, right? It shows there's an immune presence, it's doing its job. We need to figure out the trigger and help remove it so the immune system can be more effective, but it shows it's working. Too low, and what I mean by too low, this person looks great, well within that range. Mm -hmm. When I see below detectable limits on this test, and there's that'll come back fairly often, less than DL sign, below detectable limit, that tells me not that there's no inflammation. It tells me the immune system's losing the battle. Right. There needs to be some kind of a response. And so usually what I'll see is the person's been having this problem for a long time. And there's often fairly significant issues that accompany it. So we see pretty significant overgrowth, pretty significant infection. Um, and, and we'll often see that pass over into the rest of the body too. So if we run blood work, there might be low white blood cells. There might be something that's showing up systemically, not just in the gut.